Hello everyone. Whoops, that seems a little off on the angle, isn't it? Um, today we are going to review the movie Planet Terror. Now, I did see this movie a long time ago. I guess 2007 was when it came out, and I don't think I'd seen it since then. So, yeah, I found it weird then, and I still found it weird now, but... Hmm, it's just... The best way to describe it, because Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez were the main directors in it, and I don't, I don't think, does this, this one count as a Tarantino movie? I'm not sure whether it did, whether these two did or not, or whether this one did. But it was definitely, you could tell it was more Robert Rodriguez's directing style, with just Quentin Tarantino taking the reins on the special effects, because... Whenever Quentin Tarantino does special effects, it's always just top of the line, like, over-the-top gore. <laughs> and it's just so ridiculous, it doesn't even look real. But, yeah, that's just that's just his style. It it works for his movies, anyway. Like, uh, the, uh... And even, I guess, these movies. Because I think... Didn't he do some of the special effects for Machete, too? So Quentin Tarantino's had his uh, hand in a lot of different uh, movies that have this kind of, like, I guess, shoot em up just gore style and this was a zombie flick in a way I don't know this was just, it was just so weird the way the zombies were created so at the very beginning of the movie we meet I believe it was a general uh, oh sorry lieutenant Muldoon I'm gonna say and he's met by this guy named Abby who's released this chemical called DC2 they talk about it at the very end of the movie. Um, and he was... DC2 or Project Terror, I guess. Which is this chemical that can be released on a community. Or small population. And I don't know whether the military guys were using the gas... Um, see, I'm confused as to whether it was the... Like, what type of gas was infecting them. And then... These guys had their gas, a gas on that was protecting them. So I don't know whether they were using like the same compound or same chemical that was affecting the rest of them and it just didn't have an effect on them. And then when they, I guess when they uh, took the gas off, they started to slowly turn into the zombies. He kind of explains it, but it was just so weird. Um... Yeah, just weird the way he explained it. Yeah, so I'm not really sure like whether they were just exposing themselves constantly to the gas. Because Bruce Willis's character said that when they killed Bin Laden overseas, that they had this DC-2 dropped on them. So they must have been just constantly exposing themselves to it so that they wouldn't become... Oh, that makes sense. So that they wouldn't... F get the effects of the gas yeah so I guess that was it I guess that was it they were constantly exposing themselves to it um so this movie stars because I just wanted to get that out of the way uh Rose McGowan as Cherry Darling Freddie Rodriguez as Ray um and I guess his real name was El Ray now I'm not really sure I guess he was supposed to be some sort of like gunslinging guy um, but nobody really knew who he was, and he says he never misses, which was true. He never did miss a shot. Um, Josh Brolin as Dr. William Block. Um, Mary Shelton as doc Dr. Dakota Block, so I guess they were doctors together. Now, I'm not sure whether she was cheating on him or what was really going on, but there was this girl that was coming into town who was played by Fergie that I guess she wasn't supposed to be talking to anymore, and she was... Uh, her name was Tammy. She's not in the movie for very long. Um, I think we see her once, and that was it. <laughs> she had, like, one little part at a gas station. And I'm not sure whether she died or what happened to her. But anyway, um, Jeff Fahey played JT, who was the owner of the Barbecue Shack. Um, Michael Bean? Michael Bine? Played Sheriff Hogg. Uh, Rebel Rodriguez played Tony Block. So I'm assuming these are like uh, children and grandchildren of um, Robert Rodriguez, possibly. 
And then I guess that was pretty much it. Oh, and Tom Savini played Deputy Tolo. I guess that was pretty much all the main characters. And Quentin Tarantino even started it as, uh, well, that's, that's just, hmm. That's an interesting, why wouldn't they just put that he was like a military guy? He was a military guy. He started as a military guy, because I'm not even going to repeat what they cast him as. It's just weird. I guess you can go look that one up for yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's he seems to have uh, some sort of appearance in some of his films anyway. I believe he even had a little part in From Dust Till Dawn, didn't he? Oh no, I guess he was a star from... In, it, he was one of the stars in From Dust Till Dawn, the movie. What am I thinking? What movie was it where he was... It was one of his movies, too. Was it Django? Where he was at the end of it? I can't remember now, but anyway. Um, so what did I say? Oh yeah, I was talking about the compound, or the uh, gas that was released when... So I'm not really sure. This guy, uh, why can't I think of his name again? Uh, Abby is just really weird. Like, he's a scientist, so I guess he was trying to uh, create business out of his science by basically selling the gas to the highest bidder and then not realizing that obviously this military man was absolutely crazy and he was just going to release the gas in the whole city or a whole town wherever they were and try and just basically infect all the people so throughout the movie um slowly but surely these people get infected and i'm not really sure what uh the doctors were doing to the patients whether they were just killing them or whether they were giving them an actual, like, something that was supposed to be used as an antidote, because they gave them, like, three different types of needles, and then, yeah, it was just weird. It was almost like they were killing the patients. It's kind of odd, but, anyhow. Um, so you can't... So there are a select few people, I guess, that don't get infected by the gas, and they're... They kind of... At the end, El Rey says that he's... Or Ray said, says to all the people that he's with that they're the antidote, I guess. They're going to be the ones who save humanity. Now, I'm not really sure how they would do that unless they just end up killing all the zombies. But then Ray ends up dying in the final battle anyway and sends uh, uh, Cherry Darling. Cherry Darling escapes on the helicopter with the rest of the people. They go to Mexico. Uh like Ray had said, to put their backs against the water and just fight the horde off. And I guess that's kind of what they do. And she's pregnant because they had had uh, sex earlier in the movie, which is funny. And he says to her, yeah, remember I said I'd never miss. So I guess he got her pregnant. I, see, the timeline in this movie is so weird because it's almost like this is like days gone by. But it must have been like months because... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. It's it's so weird because it couldn't have been that much longer um, that they made it to Mexico, but the baby's like all grown up by then. So it was, yeah, the timeline just skips all over the place <laughs> so, in this movie. Um, it was a really odd one. Uh, the story just kind of, I guess, meshes together all at the end. Because it is really confusing as to what's going on in the beginning with the military guys wearing the masks and stuff. I thought maybe they had some sort of ability, but I guess it was just to keep them from getting infected. Um, by having long-term exposure to the gas, obviously, was keeping them from turning into zombies. And I guess Bruce, uh, Bruce Willis's character, when he transformed, it was just like... he It almost looked like he had some sort of like special abilities, but... Anyway, they, uh, Ray and Abby end up killing him, so, and also Josh Brolin's character, uh, Dr. William Block was trying to kill his wife the entire time. Again, I'm not really sure why, like, that was even a vital part to the story. Uh, he does change into a zombie because one of the zombies, um, in the, um, hospital pops one of his, like... I don't know what they were, like, swords or whatever on them, I guess, and then wipes it on his face. Um, that was just a really weird scene, because Josh Brolin could have easily, like, taken out the zombie coming out of the room, but anyhow. He, he was just standing there, like, completely, like, just deer-in-the-headlights look as this 
creature came up with him like a, a weapon and cut his glasses and then does that to him. So it was some of this some of this movie was just really weird. Um, but the one thing that happened to uh, Jerry Darling was the was she lost her leg. So Ray's Ray's Ray makes this weapon for her. Now I'm not really sure how it worked. Whether it was just like how she like reloaded it and how it worked because it was just like I don't know this not that this really matters but it was just like a gun attached to her leg near, at the end and she was a go-go dancer so she basically had a go-go dancing outfit on the entire movie as most of these people were not dressed for zombie apocalypse let's just say that much um so yeah uh it, I guess the weapon must have been automatic because every time she lifted her leg, she could basically just fire it at will. So I'm not really sure how that worked, but I'm not really going to try to think about that too much because it's way too confusing to even figure out because sometimes when she lifted her leg, she could just cock the gun. So I'm not really sure how how it worked. Just oh, Some of it was just so unrealistic, like when she grenade launches herself off of the ground. She would have killed herself, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, some of it was goofy. Um, so I'm going to give this movie, like, a 4 out of 10. Just because it... Uh, the storyline could have been explained a little bit better. And even I'm still confused in, in some parts as to why it was happening. And she gives... Like, the, the doctor, um, Dakota, gives her son a gun and says, If anybody comes back to this car but me... Uh, point and shoot, but don't shoot yourself. And of course, as soon as she walks away from the vehicle, the kid somehow shoots himself. It just why? I don't even know why that was needed in the movie. Oh, just some of it just made no sense. But anyhow, yeah, I'm gonna. What did I just give this movie? A four out of ten? I think I did. <laughs> I think that's what I rated it. Uh, just because yeah. it wasn't really my favorite movie. It's just, it's just more comical than anything else. It's almost B-rated. <laughs> almost. It's close enough to be B-rated. Um, but anyhow, I think that's pretty much all I have to say for this movie. So, as always, like, share, subscribe, and comment down below your thoughts on this film if you've seen it. If not, still go watch it, because everybody's interpretation of um, this movie will be different. And, I mean, it's Quentin Tarantino. I still like Quentin Tarantino. I would just say this wasn't his greatest creation. <laughs> um, even though he may not have had the whole, uh, you know, like, rain on the directing, if I'm saying that correctly, I think he more just kind of, like, dipped his toes in the water on this one. So, uh, not that I don't like Robert Rodriguez as a director either. I just think this film could have been, you know, done a little differently. But anyhow, I digress, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye for now.